network or find other ways to make revenue in the form of getting ad dollars from streaming your content, uh, from DVDs or from you know, iTunes or international sales or off-network syndication sales. There, you know, there's any number of ways to monetize your content other than advertising if you own that content. So this is the new normal in terms of advertising now? I think so. You're not seeing automakers rush back in trying to get people to buy GM cars this fall? I mean, yeah, I think, gee, I think yes, I don't know if they're rushing back yeah. in, but they're tiptoeing back in. Um, you know, but it's just, there's just less, uh, and it's really prevalent in the local market. I mean, the automaker, the, the local car dealer marketplace really a lot of, a lot of that in the last year for the local TV station just has been dead. Uh, but I think they're coming back. I just don't know that they're coming back in the way they were. But as I said, television, broadcast television is still the way to get a big reach you know, the big, the, if you want to get a mass message out, it's still the best way to do it. And there are those events, like the Olympics, or the American Idol finale, or the Super Bowl, that really only broadcast network can gather people around in a way that, uh, that no other media can. But does NBC have enough of those? Well, we have the Olympics. We have the Super Bowl. But so you're looking for another American Idol. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Friends finale was pretty big. Friends finale American Idol. Yeah, it'd be nice to have yeah. a you know, big reality show that, I mean, you know, again, America's got talent for us in the summer is great. Uh, biggest loser for us in the, in the regular season is great. Love that, you know, 25 million viewer regular weekend weekend show. That's water cooler show. It's a matter of time. So you mentioned the additional revenue that comes from streaming, and obviously NBC Universal is one of the owners of Hulu. You distribute your shows on Hulu as well as on um, NBC.com. How does that, I mean, in addition to providing some ad revenue, although that ad revenue, I understand, is still very small compared to uh, the rest of the business, what kind of role does that play in promoting your shows? Do you think it cannibalizes, or does it supplement? You know, our uh, research has indicated that making our shows available online have generally not cannibalized, but have ad actually become additive. Because even in the heyday of television, when there wasn't any streaming, there was really no way to time shift unless you set your VCR and paste it, and nobody really ever did that. Um, even then, the most avid viewer of a television show would probably only watch half the episode. Uh, that's the most avid viewer of a particular show. It's just that's what it was. You love this show, but you only were around to watch about half the episode. Now what we're finding is people <coughs> sampling shows. Uh, oh, I heard about this great show Dexter. I want to see it. Uh, I'm going to go online and watch it. Uh, that's that show. Times we'll get the DVD. But I heard about this great show, you know, Royal Pain. But that's also okay. Um, whatever. <laughs> a, a show. The, the Office. Yeah. By the way, The Office. The Office was actually an example of a show that was on our network, not really doing so well. And uh, right when uh, iTunes came, first came out, The Office was one of the first programs on iTunes. I, we all believe that putting The Office on iTunes turned The Office into an intelligent show. Because people sampled it. And when you sample it on a little tiny screen or on your computer screen, and you like what you see, you're going to eventually want to watch it on the big screen in your living room. So we think it helps. Uh, that said, we, we need to make the experience economically for us relatively seamless, and, and that hasn't happened. And what will that entail? I mean, what do you mean by that, making the experience economically seamless? Well, you know, right now, uh, I think we were all smart, those of us that, that, that you know, have start, started streaming our shows online. ABC started doing it, we started doing it, CBS and Fox do it, um, then Fox and NBC Universal, and then later ABC came together to form Hulu. What we've all done is created this destination site for viewers to come that is a safe, legal environment to stream content that we know is creative quality that we want people to see. It's not a bootlegged, rough cut, you know, of a, of, a, of a show that, believe me, there's plenty of those out there. And, you know, that's not the quality of the content that we want people seeing. This is a safe environment where we know this is the, this is the product we want you to see. And we've created the, the destination site. One of, one of, I think one of the smartest things that the Hulu folks, Jason Kyler, who runs Hulu, did when he first started, and this is something that we all acknowledge at NBC and at Fox, none of us would have done, is if you went to Hulu 
before ABC became a partner, if you went to Hulu and you typed in Grey's Anatomy, it would take you to ABC.com. And you could stream it on ABC.com, and Hulu would get no money for it. But Hulu was creating itself as the site to go to if you want to watch a TV show. The consumer doesn't care, oh, well, ABC is not paying Hulu any money. They don't care. They want to see Grey's Anatomy, and they want to know that they can watch it on Hulu. Now ABC is a partner, so it's not an issue. Um, I think that was all really smart. Now the trick is to, as Jeff Zucker likes to say, turn those digital pennies into digital dollars. And this is something I've talked about with the folks at Hulu. Do you think they're putting enough ads in there? I mean, the number of ads that are on a show on Hulu compared to a show on television, I mean, it's just a fraction of the minutes. Yeah. I mean, what do you think when you're watching a show on Hulu? Does it, you know, give you a heart attack to think of all those ad dollars that aren't coming in? Yeah. Does. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, see, that, that's that's the point. You know, Hulu, we're making the experience so great for viewers to watch it when they want, right? Whenever they want on a demand basis, and then to watch it with fewer advertising. Even though you can't fast forward, you have to you have to you know sit through the 15, 30 second, whatever it is. I do think Hulu is experimenting with different models. To now that they created themselves as a platform that everybody in this room, I think, knows what Hulu is. And most, uh, I think a huge portion of, of uh, the consumer population knows what Hulu is. I think it's the fourth most traveled site now. Um, and I could be wrong about that, but I think it, it's way out there in terms of viewer uh, visits. If, if, if now that Hulu has done that, now Hulu's got to really bolster on its economics. And that could be in the form of any number of things. And I know they're looking at any number including adding inventory, creating a subscription model maybe with different windows, you know, of, of the content. They're looking at any number of things, and I, I think they'll eventually get it. Earlier this week, you uh, made some comments about TV windows collapsing and how you see things being available online or maybe even on your mobile phone not so long after it airs for the first time on television. What is the future of these collapsing windows, and how, how uh, tight will these windows get? Well, I wish I knew. Uh, I wish I could tell you what the, what the future is. But I think, yeah, I just kind of go from my own personal experience. And I'm sure everybody here, you know, has a similar experience. It used to be. Um, you'd watch what was on because you really didn't have much. If you, if you were to sit down and watch television, you'd watch whatever was on. And you'd pick the lowest objectionable program with you, right? And you'd say, okay, you know, oh, it's a repeat of uh, MASH. Oh, I'll watch that, you know, because uh, there's nothing else on I want to see. Um, now, in this day and age, with Hulu and DVRs and gaming and all the online twittering and blogging, with so many choices, people are going to watch what they want, when they want. And even then, they're not going to have time to watch everything they want to watch. So you're not going to watch something by default anymore, which means that what was a hits-driven business, the television business and the film business, is now even more so. There's no middle class anymore. There's going to be hit television shows that drive revenue because people want to consume that show in any platform that they can uh, and whenever they want. And then there's going to be everything else. And in the days of shows, you know, I, I don't want to think of any examples, you know, but, uh, you know, a show like My Name is Earl, which was a good television show in the state on NBC, but ultimately the audience trailed off. And now it's in syndication. A show like My Name is Earl is not a must-watch show. Probably for some core viewer it is. But for the vast majority of people that, 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 that the studio needed to accumulate ad revenue or uh, syndication revenue from, it's not so much. And it was a very expensive show to produce. So the, the risks are bigger in creating intelligent shows, and the rewards are smaller. The way to, I think, combat that is to try to as, as quickly as possible, maximize the audience flow of your, of, your, of your show. So you get it out on Hulu or on your NBC.com as soon as it airs, and you monetize it that way in a way that's, that's legitimate. You, you, you put it on iTunes right away, or iTunes equivalents, Amazon, Unbox, or whatever. Um, you sell it in the foreign marketplace, which everybody does now. Anyway. And maybe you sell a window to a cable partner immediately where they can, they can capitalize on an episode a week after it runs on your network, or two weeks after it runs on your network, 
um, instead of two years. The problem with that is you've got a whole 